Nope, I just clicked the live. All right, because mine took an awful long time to. You are live. You are live on Facebook and you are live on YouTube. I gotta mute it. <laughs> we got two streamings. Okay. I'll check okay. It out. Well, greetings. As Sheila signs on or signs off or signs around, makes the invites, makes the go arounds. Welcome. It is so good to have everybody with us tonight. If you are watching live, thank you. Welcome. And if you are leading, uh, watching this later, not live. Welcome still, anyways. Yeah, right? <laughs> We're glad you're watching. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful summer evening here in Harriet, South Dakota. Uh, temperature is probably about 70. Feels like fall to me. Yeah, um, I can see why you would say that. It's got feel a little like, more um, pretty, cool wind. Like I'm pretty tired. It's almost like when you went to change of the seasons, how you're just like really super tired. Mm -hmm. I feel super tired this week. Okay. Maybe well, it's maybe it's old age. A new job. Yeah. A chat box too. So uh, please do share because this is a spot where we can share different books and thoughts and your favorite artists or maybe there's artists that we don't mention that you want to bring up and have yeah because highlight. there's so many to talk about yeah i really, mean it's it's, it's not enough hours of the day no and it's kind of tough to come on here and give like a five or ten minute but you know i try to i get that feed um on instagram okay uh, you know christian top charts but usually by this time of the day i forgot where i put it in my <laughs> Yeah, bookmark it, can't find it, yeah. you know. So that brings us to our next subject. Um, I bookmark four, four websites. One of them is CCM Magazine. It's uh, CCM Magazine. I think it's .com or .org here. What do we got? Uh, .com. CCM Magazine got .com. And it's everything Christian, too. So we do draw some of our news. Uh, I watched a half-hour interview with John and Corey Cooper uh, this afternoon from Skillet. That was very interesting. Their new album dropped uh, August 2nd, which was what? Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? Uh, I think it actually dropped on Friday. Okay. So uh, yeah. they were talking about that. And they also have some uh, good book reviews. They have interviews with not just music artists, but also pastors, evangelists, and whatnot. So it's, it's, it's a website worth checking out, really. And um, the other one I was looking at today, the ChristianBeat.org, and this caught my attention because I know uh, we've gotten comments on here of how many Lauren Daigle fans they are. And so uh, they highlighted that the platinum selling Grammy and award winning CCM artist Lauren Daigle continues to reach new heights as her crossover single, You Say, again, makes chart history. Now, this is how it made history. According to new reporting from Billboard, You Say has now advanced to number one on the all genre adult contemporary radio airplay chart that's awesome overall yeah that's okay. fantastic the number one spot had been occupied by maroon fives really girls like you for 33 weeks you say continues to top billboard's christian airplay chart as well making it the first song on christian airplay and adult contemporary airplay that's pretty awesome Yes. Congratulations once again. Uh, additionally, you say has spent a near record breaking 54 weeks atop Billboard's Hot Christian Songs. That's crazy. That's a combination of airplay, streams, and downloads. Nice. The only song that has spent longer at number one on this chart is Hill Songs United Oceans, Where My Feet May Fall. Fail, oh, excuse me, fail. Love that My song. bad, I should know. Uh, which championed the top spot for 61 weeks in a row. That's so, amazing. You know, she's nice. well on her way. Yeah, very cool. And also on the CCM magazine, they have the video of uh, Lauren Daigle's new... Rescue. Right. How they made it. And you were talking about it in yeah, the last and how crazy. awesome it is. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So that's cool. And also for um, the folks that watch Fox and Friends on the mornings... Mm -hmm. And Fridays, they always have the uh, All-American Summer Concert Series. 
Uh, the Un Newsboys United will be on Friday. Awesome. August 16th. Not this Friday. No. But oh. next Friday. Right. So we'll be back we'll on have here to, remember. to we'll remind have to remember. everybody. But they'll be on there at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. I see we are having a little uh, kind of glitch in our live stream okay. on Facebook and YouTube. So hang in there. Don't don't be discouraged. Um, oh, yeah. Connection is unstable. I see the message here. Yeah. It, it's been kind of, I don't know if it's the wind or... Sketchy? Yeah, it's been a little sketchy today. Is it our IT equipment here, our server? No, it's, or our, um, excuse me. Our... It's Facebook. Facebook. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Yes. The Oops. Facebook police. Yes. The Facebook police. It's okay because we'll post this. it up anyway. So in the event that you're getting aggravated by the hiccuping you may or may not be experiencing. Hang in there. We'll post it anyhow. Yeah, we'll get it recorded and post it. So, um, yeah. So good for Lauren Daigle. Good for News uh, Newsboys United. Yeah. They're making that cross, you know. Over into the mainstream. So great. And bringing God's word to, and music. Yeah. To the general public, which is always a good thing. So, nice. God bless them. The Lord works in mysterious ways now, doesn't he? Yeah. And he uses Super. us for his instruments. So, amen. Um, anything to add to that? Oh, no. Our, uh, the dog. Yes. Our golden retriever, Maggie, is... Chomping away over there on the bone <laughs> keeps her keeps her busy. Um, no, I think we're good. Any comments? I mean, no. do we have any? Okay. Not that I can see, but you know, we have we're having interruptions, so you know how that goes. Yes. It's okay though. We're all right. Okay. Well, let's pray, and we will get started here. Dear Lord, thank you for providing us. Beautiful music, music that glorifies you, dear Lord. <clears throat> we give thanks that people are talented, that you've blessed them with this, and that we glorify you in all that we do, in what we play and what we sing, dear Lord. Lord, as we dive into your word tonight once again, I ask that the Holy Spirit works in our hearts, opens our minds, opens our eyes, in our ears that we may absorb all that you have for us in the scriptures i pray this in jesus christ's name amen amen i bet she knows and she knows the flies in south dakota are <laughs> over the top ridiculous they really are seriously yeah, bad so fly problem, doing man. that it's the flies and this is the dog's toy in case we need it oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Just so you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyways. Yeah, we don't usually have that on our island or yeah. dining table. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight's subject is going to be inclusiveness. Mm. Inclusion. Mm -hmm. To be included. Included. Including people. Right. Not excluding. Not exclusion. Right. So we're going to see what... Um, the book of James has to say about this. Oh, so nice. we'll be reading from James chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. You know, the more I, I read and study James, the more I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's challenging. Don't read it if you don't want to be challenged. Wow. I just said that. Wow. So we have James chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The caption is the sin of partiality. Hear now the word of the Lord. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? 
So saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, you know, the thing I like about the book of James, man, it's just, it just doesn't beat around the bush. He comes right after <laughs> it, man. It punches you right, you know, theologically, boom, right in the mouth. Here it comes. Right. You know, and, and what he's really showing here is the fundamental incompatibility of holding faith in Jesus Christ and showing partiality among people in your assembly. You know, of course, the assembly would be, uh, today's language would be, oh, your church or your worship group or your study group. Your Not, Bible group. Right. Your women's group. Whatever church group you got going on there. Your youth group. Youth group. Ding. Yes. That you should be welcoming. Um, you know, he uses the example of rich and poor. Uh, you could use the example of, well, I don't know, but any physical attributes. Fat, skinny, beautiful, ugly. Dark clothing, skin, yeah, light skin. Whatever, whatever. Right. That's, we should not show partiality. Now this is, you know, something that a lot of Christians will no, I, of course I don't show partiality. We welcome <laughs> everybody through the doors. <laughs> You know, in, in, in studying um, human conditions and in, in group dynamics, uh, people tend to, gra to you know... Uh, gravitate? Gravitate, thank you. People tend to gravitate to people that are like them. Well, it's, right. it's naturally, right. it's a natural human nature. Right. Right, I mean, you're not going to want to... I mean, you're not going to go out of your way to... Well, it's kind of like being attracted to people, right? Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily going to be attracted to a group of people or a person or a, a, an organization that doesn't have similar likes, similar interests, you know, common beliefs, things like that, right? So um, you're not going to go out of your way to make necessarily make friends or want to hang out with somebody who doesn't like the same kind of movies that you like, right? Mm. You like horror movies and they like romance comedies, right? You're probably not going to want to say, hey, let's go to the movies together, right? Um, but I think that, so I think that's right. A natural human tendency, we are drawn to people who have like interests, like thoughts, like behaviors, or whatever. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? Well, no, I mean, hey, it's a uh, situation of you know, we only have so much time in a day and um, you have friendships and whatnot that you like to cultivate and, and family and, and things like this. What, what James is showing here is that when people come into your assembly, when they come into your church, when they come into your group, you know, when you're gathered to worship, it should be a situation of equality. Nobody's better than, you know, for all have sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God, right? Well, Romans three twenty three. It's it's a, a case of uh, we are equal in God's sight. Is it too that I don't think it's just uh, I don't think the inclusiveness that we're necessarily referring to is just about in the assembly either, right? I mean, yeah. So there's two facets in my mind, right? We're naturally going to want to spend time, spend more time with people or groups that have like common interest foundation right but we're also not supposed to only include the people who show up at our youth group church group ladies group whatever religious organization i don't think i don't think he's saying just be inclusive to the people who show up and want to be included no i think you're supposed to go out of your way <laughs> to uh try and befriend people who maybe don't have like interests. doesn't mean you have to hang out with them on a saturday night Right? right, but it does mean that we're supposed to share our Christian love and share Jesus's love outwardly with them, even though they're not right on the same whatever. So well, I mean, age and things like that. I I, I get well, it. Of course, you're not going to go yeah. hang out with a bunch of twenty year olds. I want to hang out with a bunch of fifty year olds. However, that doesn't mean that you should exclude them or not talk to them on the street or not share a kind word or leave them out purposefully because they don't fit into your little mold, right? Well, so I, I think of the Apostle Paul in your favorite book, 1 Corinthians, um, in chapter 12. Of course, chapter 13 is known as the love 
trap. You know that. Right, right. Um, but chapter 12, where we are one body and one right. spirit in the Christian world, mm -hmm. you know. So that drives home that point that James is making that. Um, Y'all know we are Christians by our love, by, by our, our love. love. Yeah, love, love that song. <laughs> Yes, yes, they'll yes. know that we are Christians yes. by our love. Not our excluding, well, not our putting down, not our condemning, not our judging. The, the caption of this is the sin of partiality. Right. The sin of partiality. And it's, mm. and it's all fine and good and all that to be... Uh, nice, right? Of course, you're gonna tr you're on your best behavior you're in the worship group or Bible study or youth be. group or you camp think you or are. church. You're supposed to be on your best behavior for at least an hour. Most people can muddle their way through it. <laughs> Truth be told, okay. Suck it up. I'm not saying everybody who's in that boat is muddling through it or not being sincere or genuine. That's not what I'm saying. However. It doesn't stop at the hour after you've spent the hour or whatever at your worship, whatever you're worshiping, and then you exclude that person after. Because what? Because they haven't shown back up. Hey, it's on them to come back. No, it's not on them to come back. It's on you and me and all of us to reach back out to them and include them. And like them. Make them feel welcome, right? Meet them where they are. And I think that's where we miss it, right? We all want everybody to meet us where we are in our Christian faith, right? To meet us at our location, to follow our rules. That's not how, that's not how Jesus was. Jesus went everywhere. Jesus didn't say, only come and I'm going to include you if you show up here at this time, wearing these things and these sandals and bringing these gifts. He didn't say that. No. But we do. We do. We do. You know, and, 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 you know, on the ultra orthodox side of it. Yeah, thank you. Give me that. Get Got that a bottle. <laughs> Knock my Gatorade around. The ultra orthodox, you know, Christian is. Um, they get the inclusiveness and they automatically think that is universalism you know in um, the doctrine of universalism to cut right to the point is that the belief that hey all humans get into heaven no everybody gets in no okay mm. and we know that you know in in in, in John 14 6 is that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me, Christ. So, you know, we're not talking about universalism. I want to make that perfectly clear because right, no. a lot of people like to blur our words in these things. Right. And, um, we're we talking, talking about, about excluding, not including. That's what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about including. Because I don't, I don't necessarily even think that we exclude or don't include on purpose, I, I don't, I, I oh, don't, yeah, I don't no. want to believe in my heart that everybody goes out of their way to only include the people that they think are worthy in their eyes. Right. We know what happens. I, I want to think everybody's going out of their way to that. I don't think that's the case. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about separate from your, separate from your whatever hour or two of worship. Are you including people? Are you meeting them where they are? Are you inviting them, right, to worship? Uh, right, Jesus is the border wall. You know what I mean? Like, let's get right to it. I mean, well, yeah, you ain't, benchmark for all of us. you're not going without the border wall of Jesus. You don't need a thing, Missy. <laughs> Here, I'll pull it. <laughs> so, and I think it's, uh, like you said, it's human nature. We're not saying, hey, go and find some people to hang out with on a Saturday night. Include everybody. No, I don't want to hang out with everybody and everybody doesn't want to hang out with me either. Well, the sin of partiality being partial to those because of their outer physical, like you say, their attractions or, you know, they have money, things like this. The earthly draw is what the devil um, preys on. It's the spiritual world in that we are Christ-like in that we invite people equally. We look at them equally in church and we treat them 
as such. This so. goes back to what we were talking about last week, the week before, about you know loving your neighbors, right? Mm. Boy, it is a difficult thing to do that, <laughs> you know. And so, how how much more difficult is it to try and invite to include that person who's your neighbor that you're choosing not to love? Mm. Yeah, that's a big ask. It's a big ask. Yeah, but you know, or go to that uncomfortable place, right? Like we also talked about, go to that, approach that person who who isn't necessarily friendly and maybe they're very, inward, whatever, you know, you're uncomfortable, right? Go, go outside of your comfort zone. That's how we grow. Right, and you're including somebody else, but you're, you're being more inclusive too. You're behaving like Jesus if you go to the uncomfortable places and face the uncomfortable situations. Let's pray. And deal with the uncomfortable people. That's a good way to end it. You better pray for that. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for the discussion. We give thanks that we can be in the, the virtual world and, and be able to discuss your word, dear Lord. We pray that we do not fall into the sin of partiality. That we keep our eyes open and our ears open and... and be Christ-like in our love, in our giving, in our attention to others, and realize that our actions do have impact on others and how we treat others. You want us to treat the way you were treated and how you treated other people, dear Lord. It's the extension of being Christ-like. Lord, we pray that the word has opened eyes and stirred hearts and that we will be back here next week, dear Lord, to once again delve into your word. I pray that we have peace, love in you, dear Lord. I pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yeah. It's like I always say, hashtag your behavior matters. Oh, boy. It's true. It is true. It is true. It is very true. Yeah. Uh, so, Sunday... Back at South Harry Park. We yep. love our little church building there, or whatever you want to say, a uh, picnic. Uh, but that's, we really do like it in the, being out in nature. It's, it's awesome. not too hot. No, it hasn't been too It's not supposed to be hot on the weekend, anyway. So, so it'll know. be beautiful once again. Yeah. And then uh, we'll be back here at 7 o'clock next Wednesday night, all things going forward. Um, we are. Having a little drive, you'll see on our Facebook page. It's uh, Shoes shoes for the Soul, and it's sponsored by University of the Cumberlands. Nice. Um, so I got an email from my alma mater, and they're having a drive until September 1st for purchasing shoes for Appalachian children and also hygiene products. Very cool. So $30, a pair of shoes. Hygiene products, they'll be set to go for school. And, uh, you know, some of these kids don't always have that. So it's uh, it's a worthwhile cause. So you can always go to ucumberlands at edu dot edu <laughs> and or just go to our Facebook page and we have the post up there and you can follow that. So uh, I think uh, we're all hungry here in the Van Curen household and we're going to go eat. So take care. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks for joining.